What is going on, Commanders fans? Tristan Talking Sports back here with another video. And today, we are going to be talking about who the best wide receiver in the NFC East is. Because I need to get, I need to, I need to debate about this, man. Because there's been a lot of people, like Eagles fans, are saying AJ Brown's the best receiver in this division. Cowboys fans are saying CD Lamb's the best receiver in this division. I personally think Terry McLaurin is the best receiver in this division. And then obviously Giants fans don't have an argument because Kenny Galladay is nowhere near any of the three wide receivers I just talked about. Um, but hey, fellas, we literally got 44 days till week one NFL kickoff on Thursday night. I can't wait, man. This offseason, it's been long and I'm just ready for the commanders to go and show what they're about. Um, we got like eight days till the Hall of Fame game. And tomorrow is the first official practice of training camp. That's where it's it's open. It's officially open to the public tomorrow for the Washington Commanders. Man, I can't wait. I'll definitely be heading down there um, once uh, in these next two, three weeks. I cannot wait to go see my boys. But, hey, man, make sure you guys go down. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. We are trying to turn up for 2022, man. I'm telling y'all. This channel is going to hopefully go crazy this football season. But, hey, let's get straight into this video. So, obviously, we really have – there's really about three receivers in this argument for the best receiver in this division. We got A.J. Brown, uh, C.D. Lamb, and Terry McCorn. Um, So, those are the three receivers that are really in this debate because no one else is really close to them. Um. So, obviously, Cowboys fans think CeeDee Lamb is the best wide receiver in this division. Now, obviously, CeeDee Lamb was a wide receiver number two last year because the Cowboys had Amari Cooper. But now that Amari Cooper left, CeeDee Lamb is going to be the number one wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, with CeeDee Lamb being the number one wide receiver, um, yes, his numbers might go up even more than he did last year. But he's also going to get a lot more of attention. He's going to get that number one wide receiver attention. And I think that could affect CeeDee Lamb quite a bit because he's going to be getting doubled. You know, they're going to, their game plan is going to be revolved around CeeDee Lamb. The, the defense is going to, it's going to focus on stopping CeeDee Lamb. Um, so I, I just don't know if you can really put CeeDee Lamb as the best wide receiver in this division. And he's also had, he's had Dak Prescott his whole career. Now, well, actually, Technically, Dak Prescott was hurt for um, the CD Lance rookie season. He had Andy Dalton pretty much the whole year because Dak got hurt in week five. So I guess you can give it to him. But like last year, he had Dak Prescott the whole season. And Terry McLaurin's never had a quarterback like that. I mean, let, let's face it. Terry McLaurin has had eight different quarterbacks since he's been in. He's had Alex Smith, Taylor Heineke, Case Keenum, Dwayne Haskins, Garrett Gilbert, Kyle Allen, what's that, six? Uh, I don't know, but there are two other quarterbacks that I just, like, cannot remember. Hold on. It's, all right, let's go with Dwayne Haskins, Kyle Allen, Garrett Gilbert, Taylor Heineke, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Garrett Gilbert. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ryan Fitzpatrick, Garrett Gilbert, Kyle Allen, Taylor Heineke, Dwayne Haskins, Case Keenum. That's six, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm forgetting two other quarterbacks, but... Terry McLaurin has had eight different quarterbacks since he's came in the league, and he still put up two 1,000-yard seasons out of his three years. In his rookie season, he had 922 yards, and he should have. I'm pretty sure he was hurt the last like couple, the last two games. So he should have had that. He would he would have had a thousand yards all three of the seasons in Washington <clears throat> if he had played those last two games. So um, when you really look at it, man, Terry McLaurin. Like, he's done the most with less. Because, I mean, dude, you don't know how much a quarterback affects can, af can affect a wide receiver like that. Um, because there's there's plenty of times where Terry McCoy absolutely beats a guy, right? And it should be a touchdown if it's thrown, you know, if it's a good ball and it leaves him. Instead, you know, guys like Taylor Heineke throw it behind him so he has to come back get it over the uh, the DB, he has to jump over the defensive back and go get the ball, and it ends up costing him like 20 yards. When he could, if the quarterback just threw it in front of him, 
that's a touchdown. Um, so, I mean, that, that's like, that just shows how much a quarterback can really affect you. Um, because at the end of the day, if a quarterback can't throw you the ball, um, then you, you can't, you know, you can't produce. Um, uh, and, Ter and Terry McLaurin does everything he can, man. But, um, that's, that's just why I think Terry McLaurin is the best receiver in this division because he's still putting up over a thousand yards a season with the, you know, he's at least having like three different quarterbacks a year. Um, you know, AJ Brown, I think you can argue, um, with Terry McLaurin, but like at the same time, man, the dude had Derrick Henry in the backfield. So when you look at it, when you, when, um, the defense has, has to, you know, worry about Derrick Henry, right? They're going to have eight to nine people in that box up front. They're going to have like eight to nine people in that defensive front. So they're going to have to like box up on Derrick Henry. So, which means that they're going to leave AJ Brown with one-on-one -on -one situations. So AJ Brown, pretty much every time he was always getting one-on-one -on -one situations. Because they have to focus on Derrick Henry, there's got to be nine people in the up front focusing to stop Derrick Henry. That leaves A.J. Brown and that leaves, you know, the middle of the field open. And that, that just gives him one-on-one -on -one situations. And once he catches the ball, there's no one to stop him because there's, like, maybe one guy back there. Um, so I think that definitely had a big effect. And Terry McLaurin, let's face I mean, his second, the, the last year, his the second closest wide receiver to him, he still had 700 yards more than that receiver. The closest receiver to Terry McLaurin last year had 397 yards receiving. That is atrocious. Like, that's that was our second best receiver last year. That's, that's terrible, man. And, you know, and so Terry McLaurin really had no help. He's had no help since he came here. Um, he's had no, so he's been the main focus of the offense. So really, when team, when opponents come to play us, their only thing is stop Terry McLaurin and we're going to win this game. That's literally the only thing. Now, Antonio Gibson is pretty good, but he's no Derrick Henry. There's not nine people in the box trying to stop him. That leaves Terry McLaurin one-on-one. -on -one. Terry McLaurin hardly ever gets one-on-ones. It's always, you know, two DBs on him and maybe a safety behind. You know, so sometimes he has three dudes on him compared to A.J. Brown pretty much just freely getting one-on-ones. Um... And, I mean, obviously a lot of people, you know, criticize Terry McLaurin because he doesn't score, you know, that many touchdowns. I mean, he only had five touchdowns last year. Um, but t doesn't, I mean, how is Terry McLaurin supposed to get a lot of touchdowns when we had the, like, one of the worst red zone offenses in the league? We hardly ever got to the red zone. So when you're, you know, rarely ever getting to the red zone, I don't, you can't score touchdowns. So that's why if he was if he's on a better offense that's actually pretty good in the red zone, he would score a lot more touchdowns. Not to mention, there's probably at least three times where he has a dude beat for a touchdown and Taylor Heineke throws it behind him. And, you know, he has to come back, get the ball, and he ends up being 15 yards short of the end zone when it should be a walk-in touchdown um, if Taylor Heineke knew how to throw the damn ball. So, um... You know, I just don't, I, I hate when people bring that up because it's like, ter how is he supposed to get touchdowns when he's on the worst red zone offense, when he's on the worst, one of the worst offenses in the league? You know what I'm saying? But anyways, um, I just think Terry McLaurin is a guy who can, you know, he can go out and he's just always going to produce no matter what quarterback. You don't have to worry about him. He's shown that he can do it with any quarterback. Now that we have Carson Wentz, you know, at least, you know, a decent a legit quarterback, Terry McLaurin is going to thrive off that. He's going to be even better than he's been. Um, and I think he's going to show that now that he actually has a quarterback. Um, and if Carson Wentz can stay healthy the whole season like he did last year and like he did in 2019 before the playoffs, um, then that Ter him and Terry McLaurin are going to have a really good connection. And, you know, I, I just think – um, C.D. Lamb has not proven that he's the best wide receiver in this division. I mean, maybe his numbers have, but until I see him do it as a wide receiver number one, I can't put C.D. Lamb up there. I can't. Um, A.J. Brown, I mean, you know, obviously I'm not going to act like A.J. Brown had a world beater at quarterback, but he still had 
a decent top, you know, t t Ryan Tannehill's probably in like a 16, 17 range. That's still a decent, legit quarterback who can consistently, you know, you know, give you, he can consistently produce week in and week out. You know, he's going to give you average quarterback play. Terry McLaurin would love to have Ryan Tannehill compared to what he had. I mean, you give Ter uh, Terry McLaurin Ryan Tannehill these past three years, and I'm he's definitely the best receiver in this division. Um, but I, I just think Terry McLaurin with all the eight different quarterbacks and him still being probably the best receiver in this division, I think is incredible. And I just think that that just makes him so good. Um, so, and people who are criticizing Terry McLaurin's, you know, touchdown numbers, look at our red zone. Like, look at our numbers in the red zone, man. We, like, hardly ever got there. So it's hard to score touchdowns when your team is barely ever in, in the red zone. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so, you know, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Terry McLaurin, it's an argument, but C.D. Lamb, I just, I don't know. I, I need to see him do it at the number I need to see him getting that number one wide receiver attention and see what he can do. Now, if he can still put up over 1,000 yards, then maybe, but... um. You know, I, I just think Terry McLaurin's done it. Uh, I think Terry McLaurin and A.J. Brown have done it much longer than C.D. Lamb. I think they've definitely proven themselves. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see. But, I mean, it's really, it, it's close for sure. It's tight. I'm not saying Terry McLaurin is a lot better than any of these, these receivers because he's not. Um, but these are just my thoughts. Um, I just think Terry McLaurin is the best wide receiver in this division. Um, I think you just look at the dude's situation. He's had the worst quarterback situation in this uh, in the NFC East by far. And he's probably had one of the worst quarterback situations in the league. Probably has had the worst quarterback situation. I mean, do you know another star wide receiver that's gone through eight different quarterbacks in three seasons? I don't think so. So, I mean, when you just look at that, and, you, and Terry McLaurin is still putting up over 1,000 yards. I think that's pretty incredible to me. And, you know, I just don't think, you know, any of these receivers could do what Terry McLaurin does in his situation. Um, and he does more with less, and I think that's what makes him better. Um, and I, I need to see what A.J. Brown can do without having, you know, Derrick Henry, you know, in that backfield. Because, you know, A.J. Brown's going to be, they're going to focus on stopping him. And I need to see him, you know, be able to handle that before I can put him, uh, as the best wide receiver in this division, I just think Terry McLaurin's been the main target of this offense for three seasons, and he's been the main focus to stop by opponents for three seasons, and he's still producing. And I just think, you know, no other wide receivers have to do that in this division, and I just that, that's why that's what makes him better. Um, but those those are just my opinions. Um, you know, we can debate if you want. I mean, we can de we can debate in the comments what you guys think. Actually, my comments turn off in like five minutes because I'm not 18, unfortunately. But um, if you want to debate who the best wide receiver in the division is, just, you know, hit me up. But I mean, guys, we're, le we're legit 44 days away from kickoff. We're, we have about another week until we actually get to see live football. I can't wait, man. But Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.